The answer to the burning question, it is hot enough for me. <laughs> Almost it is. Welcome to summer. We're glad that you are here. We're glad to have our youth back. And we're glad to have the McMass back. They are going to, yeah, Brendan and Steve, where they are. Maybe their fault. They may have brought this hot weather with them because they've been out in the West for how many months now? It was cool out there. <laughs> well, you know it. Well, welcome home. <laughs> and, uh, the scripture this morning, uh, you know, we follow the lecture, but it seems particularly important because the youth will be sharing after the offertory about their experiences in Arkansas, uh, especially the Amos passage where he talks about the poor. Uh, when we first began the passage, uh, when we first began the Arkansas Mission Project with CBF, it was because the, that county was the poorest in America, and I don't, know, I don't think anything's changed. This is what the Lord showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wellings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many and cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this. You that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land. Say, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and the practice deceit with false balances. Buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will not forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, all who, and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? That day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning of an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. And then Jesus tells us something about distractions in Luke. Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of that word. And in the hearing of that word, May we find and live the truth in it. May we pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you that we can come to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the safe return of our youth. We thank you for the work that they have done and how they have done it. We have thank you for what they have learned and what they have given. We rejoice. We remember today the many who are suffering. We remember the many who are hurting. We remember the many who are sick. And we lift up in a special way this day, Drew Airwood and the death of his wife, Leanne. We know the hurt and the pain there, and we lift him up to you and know your love is there. And for that, we are grateful. And this time we come together, we remember. We remember others who are suffering, others who are lonely, others who are hurting. We remember because they are our neighbors. Now bless us in this time as we open our hearts up to you. In your loving and precious name, we do pray. Amen. Let's pray. Shine, Jesus. 
position. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of your darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set your hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. With grace and mercy, set forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Here and here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Our Father, we thank you again that we can come to you. We thank you that we can bring our gifts, our offerings. We thank you because you have given us life. You have given us all. Now, we know these gifts will be, blessing, will be blessed through the working of your kingdom, the sharing of your love. Thank you. As we give, bless the gifts and the giver. In your name we do pray. Amen. Praise God from whom. Too bright, it'll give me a headache. Don't want to do that. Um, 
I'd just like to start out by saying thank you for the opportunity to go. Um, this trip began with distractions because as we started, a uh, big distraction was swirling in the Gulf and we had no idea what we were heading into with uh, Barry going to be heading up Mississippi up towards Arkansas and so we kept looking and luckily we had an in-house meteorologist um, that kept us informed um, of what was going on. So I'd like to just begin by telling you what the day looked like and then I'm going to let them speak. Um, when we're in Arkansas, our day begins on sun last Sunday we worshiped with a local Methodist church. Then after that we met in another church that supports the to Together for Hope ministry and we had a worship service and one of the things they did this year which was a little bit different they had posters of different areas of the community like economics, community, schools, crime and we were to go around and read those to help us be introduced into the community. Uh, then we broke up into groups. There were 10, I think there's 10 groups and um, there's older kids and younger kids and our young people, there were 16 of us and um, they are the group leaders that lead the children from station to station. Uh, the stations are uh, Bible story and this year the Bible story, the Bible focus was the armor of God from Ephesians. Then there are sports, they did soccer this year. Then there's music, their favorite time. Um, we miss you, Lindsay. Um, and uh, crafts, and then they go to the pool and swim twice. Uh, that's a big part of it is swimming twice because living there on the Mississippi, a lot of them don't know how to swim and it's a big, big thing. Um, then at night we meet together and have a devotion and they're given a journal and, a, and keep track of what goes on during the week and the journal becomes a very important thing. I know a lot of these have kept their journals over the years that they have gone. Um, one of the things that I mentioned was crafts and being um, the armor of God. One of the armors of God is the breastplate of righteousness. Now how do you explain to children that are poor and some have never been in a church before what righteousness is. So I did some research and righteousness is basically doing the right thing. And so we always, I always print a shirt and they decorate it as one of the crafts because a lot of kids don't ever have any new clothes and they will wear these every day. So the shirt this year when it said righteousness was this. Love God, love people. What more way to do the right thing than to love God love people. And we're going to pass some of these out during the children's time for the second service uh, to share with them. But now I'm going to let y'all speak and then I'm going to come back and take you on over. How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, my name is Frank for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I just graduated from UNC Charlotte. Uh, I am 23. I have a degree in meteorology as Paul mentioned. <laughs> uh, and so the rain was definitely a factor this year. Uh, but it didn't put a damper on anybody's mood. Uh, this is my eighth year going to Helena, West Helena. Um, yeah, it's a, the town has a funny name. <laughs> it's, it's hyphenated, but um, it's kind of, the town is kind of split into two parts. Um, that's not really that important, but uh, so I'll keep moving. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of testimony from this year. Um, there's a young gentleman who I've been working with uh, for eight years now. Uh, I had Eric Brown in my group the first year that I was here, or the first year that I went to Arkansas. Um, and Eric, he's 18 now. He just graduated from high school. He just received two different full rides to two different colleges. Uh, and for the life of me, I can't remember which one he accepted, but um, Eric plans on majoring in childhood education because of his time in swim camp. And he plans after graduation to go and teach in Helena. Um, so that really, really speaks to how important it is of what we're doing here. We're investing in the future of this community. Um, this year I had a camper in my group. Uh, she was an 11 year old. Her name was Naraya. And uh, Naraya was very, very funny. She really, really loved to dance and she made sure that I loved to dance. And uh, 
I have two left feet, and um, there are some videos, so if you want to see them, please ask. They're very funny. <laughs> but uh, she was she was very, very encouraging to both me and the rest of the group. Uh, she always had a smile on her face. And um, to me, that really, really spoke volumes on what it means to be a Christian. Because there is the part of being a Christian that is leading to people to Jesus and the gospel. But there's a little bit more to it than that that sometimes we forget about. Um, we have to be encouraging. And we have to show unending love with a smile on our faces. And um, it, was, it was really, really incredible to receive that from an 11-year-old. Uh, very humbling. Um, so <laughs> before I get too choked up, um, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and a special thank you to the, anyone who has worked Hot Dogs, Barbecue, UNC Charlotte's concessions um, for your tithes, your support, and your prayers. Uh, because this is an incredible, incredible opportunity. Um, it really, really has shaped me as a person. Um, I'm very, very thankful for this, and I, I can't express that enough. So really, really thank you guys. I appreciate it. For the, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Hey, I'm Turner. Um, I'll be a sophomore at Chapel Hill, and this was my sixth year going to Arkansas with the group. Um, so first, I'm going to talk a little about, bit about Helena. Um, it's a seemingly pretty forgettable place. Uh, I found out this year it doesn't even have a movie theater, which made me kind of sad. I don't know what I would do if I lived there without a movie theater. Um, but in that week we go every year, uh, we really feel like the entire dynamic of the town changes. It's really incredible, and we've met some of just the best people you could ever meet in this town and established so many relationships with the kids, um, with leaders in the camp, and other people our age, um, and it's just an incredible experience. Um, every year, I also feel like there's a different call to get me back in Helena. Uh, I didn't exactly plan on going back this year, but somehow it kind of just works out where you always end up going back. And it's just, it's, it's something that you feel your year isn't really complete without going and serving and spending time around all of those people that you've built these relationships with over the years. Um, this year, my call was a little different being away for a year uh, my sister, she is not here. She's not a morning person exactly, so she'll be at the next <laughs> service. But uh, that was one of the biggest calls for me to go this year, was to be able to experience the camp with her. Um, and then also, I kind of missed the group, being away for a year. Um, I didn't exactly find like a service ministry like this group at school this year. So it was something that I really wanted to get back to and be able to spend time with these people too because not only do we impact the kids on this trip, uh, we really impact each other and get a lot cr closer as a group, um, as I'm sure all of them can attest to as well. Um, let's see. Uh, so my sister, she worked with Spencer, who will be here later. Um, we got, I got to watch her grow throughout the camp for her first year. And in my sixth year, I've seen a lot of people come in, go through the camp. Um, and it was really awesome to watch her grow and kind of see my first year through her eyes again. Um, good to see her meet the kids for the first time, have her first day of camp, have little kids jumping all over her and giving piggyback rides all day, all week. And that was something that was just so cool to see and see God working through her this week. Um, I also, we dealt with new challenges this year. Um, I worked with Haley and Ben, and we've all been going for a number, number of years. We're all college students and pretty experienced campgoers. And we still had our hands full this week. Um, we had a difficult group, but um, we, we spent time with them. We really tried to just kind of understand where they were coming from, understand the kind of 
things they live through every day and just show unconditional love as much as we could. Uh, and we really were able to balance off of each other and have a still really good week, despite some different struggles and challenges that we hadn't experienced before. Um, so the reward is always greater than any challenges we face there. And it's just such an amazing experience to see your kids grow more comfortable around each other through the week, uh, learn to swim, and, and just build bonds that really are unbreakable in that town. So um, thank you all for giving us the opportunity to go for all of your hard work and all the time you put in. Um, we all just love this trip, love being able to go with each other and serve in that community. So thank you. Hi, I'm Madison. Um, it was my second year going on this trip and one of the main reasons I love going on the trip is to see the different atmosphere. It's definitely a different place. It's completely different almost than anything you'll see around here. And even going back again, it was different than what it was last year. Um, so it was my second year and I was working with Caroline this year. Um, and we definitely had our struggles. Um, we actually had a child with autism in our group. So that was a little bit challenging, but we worked through it. And overall, it was a great week. And I love going on this trip. So thank you all so much for the opportunity to give us that we can go. And thank you. Okay, hi, I'm Haley. Um, I'm also gonna be a sophomore at UNC, and I worked with Ben and Turner, as was previously said. And like Turner said, we had a very interesting week. And quite frankly, I don't know how to put into words the group we had. It's kind of hard to, you just kind of had to have been there to experience the kids that we had. But I will say just thank you, because I know I personally need this trip. This trip for me is a large source of my joy, and being away from this group for so long and then having being able to come back together with them is amazing. And it's, it is more than just eight days with some of my personal favorite people on this planet. Um, it's going and seeing perspective of the world we live in and seeing perspective of their community that we can bring back to ours that we quite frankly don't see in our little shells and our little bubbles. So thank you for that. I'm Caroline, for those of you that don't know, and this is my fifth year going to Arkansas. And I always go back and I have like a new experience there, and I really love it, and I really want to thank y'all for letting it like happen. I didn't really think I was going to like it my very first year, because I'm not a big outdoorsy person, <laughs> but I really had a great time. And uh, this year, as Madison said, we work together. And then we always travel, the younger groups travel with one older group. So me and Madison ended up traveling with Frank's group this year. And as Frank mentioned, one of the little girls, Naraya, she was probably like the nicest but sassiest little girl you've ever met. Um, <laughs> She always ran up to you and said, hey, and hugged you if you didn't come and say hey to her first. And so throughout the week, she kind of helped with our group and with Frank's group. She was super encouraging, as Frank said. But on the last day, this was her last year in camp. And um, on the last day, all the kids try to get you to take videos and pictures of them jumping off the diving board, saying that they learned how to swim. And Naraya had never jumped off the diving board in all her years, and this was gonna be her last year. And I was sitting by the pool and I asked her, I said, if I jump in, will you jump in off the diving board? And she said, yeah, sure, I'll do it if you jump in. Now, I had all my clothes on. <laughs> I didn't have a bathing suit or anything like that. And so I stood up, and whenever I stood up, she didn't think I was going to do it. So she goes, wait, 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 I changed my mind. I don't know that I want to do this. <laughs> and so 
then I ended up asking her again, do you really want to do it? And she said, yeah, I'll do it if you jump in. And so I jumped in the pool, and a couple minutes later, she jumped in right after me onto a noodle. And um, <laughs> so later that day, this was probably like the best part of the week for me. Um, she came up to me and she says, thank you for believing in me and just hugs me. And um, that was probably like the icing on the cake for me. So I really want to thank y'all for letting me experience that. I guess it's my turn. Um, I'm Ben. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, this is my sixth year traveling to Helena, West Helena, Arkansas. And as they mentioned before, I worked with uh, Turner and Haley. I almost said my own name, that's not how that works. Um, and as Haley said, this year was very different than the others. We were in a new location than we have been before. The rain kind of put a damper on things, um, pun intended. <laughs> but today I, I want to talk more on the on the town than the swim camp although the swim camp itself was a great experience as always um, the town I truly noticed some significant changes this year um, every time we go back we go back once a week every year, so the changes between each year are pretty noticeable typically. But this year, the changes were a bit different. Before, I've noticed things like the Sonic has changed locations, or they have a Taco Bell now. Um, but this year, just I noticed that a lot of people weren't there. That may be because we went a, to the second week instead of the first. Um, but the, the festival we typically go to on Saturday when we arrive is no longer happening. And that, that's kind of hard to put into words when it's just a, a happy time for the whole community and then it's just suddenly not there anymore. Helena West Helena has a very different culture than Concord Cannabis. It, frankly, it's like a different planet, a different country um, it's it's not a very striking town if anything it's a, a sketchy rest stop on a road trip but to me and I'm sure to many other people in this group this town means a lot and I, I feel that this little town with a 33% poverty rate is truly close to God. And I just want to thank you, thank you all for the opportunity to visit. Thank you. I am Andy, and this is my third year going. And I brought my handy dandy devotion notebook, so I won't forget to tell you some important things. I want to remember about the week. Um, if I had to describe this week in a few simple words or phrases, I would say challenging, different, inspiring, memorable, planting seeds of hope and potential, and seeing and sharing God's love in unique and unexpected ways. We didn't know what to expect going into it with the rain coming, and we found out that the we are usually in the large park, and the swimming pools here and then all the camp activities are out in the park and we can see each other and see everything going on all at one time and then it was moved into the church and so they would take van rides back and forth to the pool uh, we weren't sure how it was going to all work out but it worked out just fine and we could definitely see God's presence there and working in our youth and helping them to adapt to the changes and um, adapting the activities and adjusting um, and it all worked out just fine as, 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 as it did um, this trip is very much about relationships and connections with people. It's about the relationships that are strengthened within our youth group and the bonds formed. It's about the relationships with the children of Helena. It's about the relationships with the other volunteers at swim camp, the people of Helena, 
um, Miss Rosie, who cooks the best fried chicken ever, and um, just the different people in the community that volunteer each year. And it's also the relationships with the people that we come in contact throughout the trip, whether it's the lady we're in a long line at the bathroom um, at a rest stop, and she asks, you know, what are all you doing here? And we explain the trip, and you get into a conversation there, and maybe we're out to dinner, and the waitress is waiting on this table of 16 people, and she's doing an awesome job, and we're, you know, telling her a little bit about the trip. So we have all these little places to, to um, spread God's love and... Um, and share throughout our trip, not just in Helena as well. And we see God's fingerprints in all these people. They all certainly bless us, and I really feel like we bless them in most cases right back. And it's all about kindness and sharing, and sharing God's love to all that we come in contact with. And like the t-shirt said, love God, love people, and these, the young men and women behind me have done an awesome job at that this week. And it's been my pleasure to watch them grow up physically in the church and grow spiritually um, in their walks in faith and to serve as group leaders at the swim camp. They've done an awesome job, and Paul and I have had other um, adult leaders at swim camp come up to us throughout the week, too, and say, you know, your, your youth, your college students are doing an awesome job. They're, you know, so responsible and mature, and um, we've seen you all in very difficult circumstances with misbehaving children and the rain and adjustments and van rides that were late, picking them up from the from the swimming pool and it was so very, very hot and they were stuck out there for 20 minutes or more extra being outside with their kids, trying to keep them occupied. So we've seen them persevere in, um, in, in through these diff some of these difficult circumstances and show God's grace and unconditional love to these children. And there's also the sweet, adorable kids that won't, that are like clinging to you on the piggyback rides and won't let you put them down. They're craving for attention and um, they've done all of that. And I'm so proud of Leah and Holland for um, being so brave and deciding to come on the trip. Um, it was great to see them as leaders and, and um, enjoying Helen as much as we all do. I want to I thank Paul for his leadership um, in serving, the, serving our youth group and our young adults and our children. And, um, and just before the church van ever pulls out of the parking lot, he's already put in tire, tireless hours of months in advance of planning and preparing and organizing just to make the trip happen. And I want to thank Steve and all of our church family for just making this trip possible, um, for all your love and prayers and support. Um, it's definitely a memorable and a life-changing trip, and I think it's something these young people, will, the mem they'll carry the memories with them for a long time. So just thank you all for your support and for believing in them and um, helping make this trip possible. Thank you. I have to admit that this was probably one of the most challenging trips with the, the rain, uh, moving location from the park to the church. You would think, okay, you're inside in the air condition, but then when you have 100, 150 people inside a church and crammed in and they have 15 minutes to go upstairs and they have to fill that 15 minutes with something, uh, groups were on top of each other, um, and we had some illness in the group that we had to deal with. Right, Brian? Okay. Uh, uh, so it was just a uh, different group type of trip, but within that, what you do is you learn more about people. And I think I learned more about this group on this trip than I have in previous years. Um, they, I, Turner, Ben, and Haley downplayed their group. If you've ever seen The Incredibles and have seen the character Jack-Jack, they had four of them. And so when you say? Jack-Jack with punching bags. Yeah, Jack-Jack with punching bags. Um, so they had their hands full, and to see them step up, uh, it was amazing because if one was frustrated, one would step out and the other two would step in. And so they were able to play off each other. Uh, to see Holland and Leah step up their first time. But also, the way this group interacts. Now, there's two people here that I want to thank because 10 years ago, they had a vision. And this is the result of that vision. Roger, Jennifer, thank you very much for having that vision and starting this process and planting those seeds uh, with this group. 
and with this ministry. So thank you very much for that. Um, because I started with a small group. And one of the things that we have done over the years is a, my mouth's getting dry. Um, one of the things we've done the last night is do a little party. And basically because of their vision, we view that as the birthday of this youth ministry. Because going on that trip was basically the growth and you've heard me say that the Sunday that group reported was the first day that my family visited. And we found out that was basically one of the first times Frank had visited. Um, so you planted seeds on those days. Um, there's a story that I like to tell, and they've heard it before. There was a little boy on the beach. And on the beach had washed up a bunch of starfish. And the little boy was walking up to the starfish and he'd grab one and throw it back in. He'd walk up to another one and throw it back in. And this man came up to him and he said, what are you doing? There's thousands of starfish. You're really not going to have an impact or make a difference. And the little boy reached down, picked up a starfish, and it says, it makes a difference to this one, and threw it back. So what they're doing is making a difference one at a time with children and by making an impact with the children into the community. But also, I wish I brought some water. Also what happens is as they give, they receive. Um, and I don't know who receives more. And... Um, that's why they keep going back um, because, as Ben described, it's probably a sketchy rest stop. And you would ride through it and think, I want to get out of this place. But yet it has left an impact on us. It's like Jesus went into the sketchiest places to show that they were loved. And this is what this group does. Amen. Thank you, Paul. We'll stand and sing our invitation. And after that, there we are. So everybody will shake your hand. Look, you want to... We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I forgot we had to do announcements. You can sit down. <laughs> but stay, then come right back, okay? All right. So, let's go right to, uh, as we think, we not only go to Arkansas, but we go to Concord. And in the Logan community, we have uh, another set of needs that we address. Our kids, <laughs> we'll call them our, 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 our teens are, when they go to, to uh, Arkansas. It's always a, a pleasure and a blessing to hear what happens while they're there. Um, three ways we can help right here in Concord. One is to volunteer 
to come and to wash the feet of those little children, put socks and shoes on them. And that happens on Saturday, August the 10th, from uh, 10 o'clock until 12, knowing that you might go a little past 12 because we finish off the line with, at the, child, uh, the, with the children. The second way we can help, of course, is to bring school supplies and bringing school supplies and placing them in our box back there uh, through August the 4th. That's the Sunday before the event on Saturday. And then I just found out this week that they are the exact date of the book packing. They are going to take all the supplies we've collected, plus other churches, plus other organizations, and they're going to pack those book bags and uh, put, uh, fill them up. And that's going to happen on Wednesday, August the 7th, and that will be at Epworth. So we would gather at, at Epworth in order to put all those together. Uh, I do appreciate your help and your volunteering to help with this because it is such a special event that takes place, not just to us, but to those little children. So keep praying for those children, for the uh, teachers who will get them in their classrooms, and for us as we volunteer. Thank you. Thank you. What a great bookends. Any announcements? You're good? All right. Uh, Christian Cream opens up this week. That's an announcement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a good announcement. Uh, Madison, you didn't tell us uh, you have a road trip every year for your birthday. She celebrates her birthday in Arkansas or on the way. Uh, happy birthday. Any other announcements? Remember, uh, uh, Share the Harvest Garden still do it. There's two dates left. Uh, the kids, grade one through six, it's good to see them. Uh, they sizzled literally this week. <laughs> they they uh, uh, sauteed some vegetables and other things. Uh, but it's sort of like that uh, meteorologist out in the Midwest that uh, they baked stuff in the car. Did y'all see that on the TV? Well, you don't want to see it. <laughs> it makes you think it's too hot. Anyway, uh, re I'll continue to remember the garden. Uh, Later on in the year, soon we'll need help in some of the harvesting, especially when the sweet potatoes come, so remember that. Uh, hot dog sales have come, um, resume, help let one for you know if you can help. Joy Club meets Thursday, August the 8th. Uh, Lamar Berry is the guest speaker, and it's going to be brunch with uh, country ham and eggs. So, all right, kids, come on back, kids, young, young adults. You're always going to be kids to me. I'm going to uh, come on down after the service, please, to let them know how much you appreciated all they did and how they did it. May we stay. And now may we go into the world. May we love God and love people, for that is indeed what it's all about. And may we go to our neighbor and be a neighbor. And may we do the very things that God would have us to do and be, for we are the church. And we give thanks this day for these young adults, for the safety of the trip, for the meaning of the trip, for the impact of the trip, both on that place and this place. And so we go now in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>